everybody. Uh, my name is Nat. I'm currently working in Shopee as a React Native team. But today's topic is not really about React or React Native at all. We will talk about GraphQL. I, I just want to show you guys like, why I really love GraphQL, and you guys should too. So let's start about, it started about three or four years ago that I started uh, learning React. So I used the common practice, which is uh, Redux. Uh, and by that time, Facebook also uh, announced a new open source library. It's called Relay. And I was frustrating because I thought it's going to be like replacement for Redux. Because you know all the read thing that Redux like, environment, you know? Anyway, but it turned out it doesn't. So it's, it's kind of like a, a way, a, a gate to a new experience on the amazing technology called GraphQL. Uh, you can say GraphQL is like a replacement for REST API, but actually it's have a pro and con. But now I'm only going to talk about pro of GraphQL and con of REST API, of course. Uh, yeah, so usually when you fetching the data from the server, we will use the HTTP because it's very simple. All, every browser can perform HTTP requests. And the, the protocol is very simple as well. Like you just have a string with some rule as a URL, and then they also have a bunch of HTTP method. So yeah, you can do everything there with the actual HTTP requests. But the bad thing also, you can do everything there because it's really generic. You don't really, like the new guy that you want to like, request the data, you need to learn everything about your how server built in to be able to perform a request. That's why we kind of invent a common practice, like a best practice or a guide for building your API server. So I think this one is a popular one, like it's less API, which uh, is look like this. So I'm not really going to talk about it because I'm also not sure what is really what is very called as API, but is uh, use like a full method of HTTP and then have some like semantic name in URL. But clearly, as you see this, it's just a common practice, which means there is no rule that you can apply to this. And you also, it's just a string, so you don't know what is result when you requesting this, right? You need to try, try requesting this API, or you may need to like, uh, lead to the server API document anyway. So that's why GraphQL is introducing. So it's introducing as a query language. So it's a language which means there is a syntax. You have only limitation way that you can make a request. But for server side, you need to serving a thing called schema. So this is like an extra work that you need to do. And you also need to serve the data respect by the schema. So the schema is also writing in GraphQL language. And for every client that want to request from you, you need to, uh, so this is how schema look like, uh, which have a, like a simple, look like a type definition in TypeScript or flow, right? Have a primitive type, have an array, have a, uh, you can do an array of another type as well. So this is very simple. And every client, when you want to request data from the GraphQL server, you need to write a query, which your query cannot just randomly write it. You need to respect the schema that the server is serving, and, and uh, server will return you the data that you request, like in the same manner that you request. So this is how it works. Actually, other than that, it will throw an error. But it's kind of, it looks like a lot of work that it needs to be done, but why is this good? So a lot of people might introducing you uh, GraphQL like up to as a as a architecture that solve some technical issue of the less API like over fetching under fetching or you can do a batching the request. But for me, the most benefit is having a tight system in the API schema. So what can you do with the schema? So. It's created, uh, the simple example is, this one is like a graph IQL, which is like a document for your GraphQL server, uh, but it's kind of go to next level because it can serve as a simple IDE. And you can really have an auto-suggestion and you can play around, like keep typing and then try it right away. 
So this is a really simple example of it, but actually the schema can enable you more than that. So I want you guys to think about the way that connect the server to the client and have a really strict tight system in between it. So the really first use case that I can think of is generating a type. Because type in schema is really lean, right? So it can possible that you can generate any like language Thai system language. Like not only TypeScript for or like uh, reason, you can also generate like a uh, server code like uh, C plus plus or GraphQL uh, you know, uh, or Golang. Like anything can be generated from this. And another thing is auto mocking. So you can do auto mocking your query or even your component level. So the mocking here is not, for me, it's not really just for unit tests. You can also doing while you development, and then you working on your UI state logic or something, right? And then you just don't really care about the uh, business layer from the server. You're just mocking everything of that. And then, yeah, it's like have more, less dependency when you start developing it. And then when you really want to integrate it, you just, changing the mock query into the real actual query and then everything will work seamlessly because it have a type. And another thing that I want to introduce is uh, Apollo Engine which uh, is renamed to Graph Manager uh, recently is a uh, performance enhancing. So the idea is you upload the schema into that server and also uh, upload the performance enhancing of each view of every user that tries to request that, right? So this one is, uh, it, and it will keep track of the performance of each field, and also how user really use your schema. And they also shift another amazing product, which is uh, IDE integration in VS Code, is uh, Apollo VS Code. So, that, so all of that that I'm talking is also you can see all the, all the thing here in your, right away in your IDE. Like they have a, a syntax highlight and you have, when you hover it, you can see the document inside your, your own IDE. You don't need to open the document API anymore. It's right here in IDE. And other than that, it's also able to like prefetch your schema and verify that you do something wrong with your with your, uh, when you type it or not. Like this case is have a deprecation flag and this guy is not really exist in the type and it verified in your IDE at that time. Uh, okay, another thing is also uh, they can integrate back to the Apollo engine that I said early and it can show the performance of each field right away when you, so I feel like this one is really easy to really optimize some performance because when you move some field right to another, like let's say another request, you can uh, the all the information is kind of gathered inside your IDE already, and refactoring is really easy. So actually, this is just an example of like how we really use the schema, but uh, there is a lot of usage of it. Like the Gatsby also use it to like uh, uh, like optimize that build time or some like uh, helping p cache for your server side before before the high end will deploy. So yeah, so for me is having a strict type schema is kind of enable you to like have a better developer experience. So that's why I think I love GraphQL. Thanks.